have a reading issue because everything's taking over my screen here, so I'm going to hack this. <laughs> uh, so if anybody came here last year, uh, you do know me as Root. Um, there we go. I'm Root. Uh, I am a uh, fo founding member at MBOA. We have the product, uh, jmp.chat is probably what most people would know. Um, MBOA is a software development, and we work with open source software. So it's pretty fun. It's a great gig. Um, oh, not the wrong screen. There we go. I primarily do support for JMP, but I'm also a part-time developer. Um, and break a lot of things. Not, not as much as uh, so, some of us do, though. And also, uh, you actually did catch the logo. Um, a new, new entrepreneur starting a business. So we're going to, of my own, we're going to see how that goes. Great, and more glitches, all right. So why XMPP? That wasn't supposed to be the opening line, but because it's cool. Um, that is one of the things, you do get to control your data. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, and so are you. You use open source software, you are cool. Um, your communication, is also private and secure. XMPP, you can use end-to-end -end encryption on it. Uh, also, you get to run it yourself. That's the purpose of this talk. Anything you can run yourself, you put it on your own hardware. You don't have to trust somebody else to be in control of that data. And it's open source, I said that. All right, why Snicket? Snicket is very beginner friendly. Cool logo too. Love the Snicket logo. It's uh, beginner friendly as well as XMPP. It runs on a small amount of hardware. Um, you don't even need the newest, latest, greatest Raspberry Pi. You can pick up a Raspberry Pi, the original. It's, it has enough hardware specs to run an XMPP server. Uh, if you want to do video chatting, that might be a different story on that, but it's really great. Um, it also just works with sane defaults. Um, if you're more experienced, you want to play with, say, something like Prosody, customize that all you want, or there's, I can't even remember them all, there's many others, e as well. C customize them how you want to, have fun with it, but with Snicket, the idea is to be beginner friendly. So anybody set it up, it just works. So that's going to be our more of our focus. With this, assumptions today, you have at least basic Linux experience. So if you uh, don't know how to run a Linux terminal, whatever, you're a Windows person, it's not too hard to learn Linux. Um, but that is what uh, will, be, will, will be needed. Um, if you're going to run it on a server, because I don't think anybody has got XMPP set to run on Windows. Uh, what you will need, buttons that work for me, a server with SSH access, because you will need to actually install the software. Uh, there are some hosting companies, they give you like a fake server, and it won't work. You need to actually get root access. Docker and Docker Compose. Um, if you're a Podman fan, uh, I don't believe it's guaranteed to work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it works in theory, um, but yeah, do Docker is what it was all geared for. Um, curl to download the 
setup scripts, well, not script, setup files, um, and a domain name. Please make it awesome. I've seen some terrible ones. And a keyboard. Sitting is optional. All right, setup and installation. So for your domain name, that is what the DNS will need to look like. Uh, if you don't have uh, IPv6, that is fine. It'll still work on IPv4, um, and you won't need that record. But you do also, for Snicket, need the, the C names as well, or the extra features of your server will fail to work as well. You won't be able to share files. Um, Snicket also does need the A records because it sets up a web dashboard for you to manage the instance from. So, set up an installation. You need to install Docker and Docker Compose uh, along with curl. Um, once again, if you need the commands for those, you can find them online. You will want to create a folder on your server. Um, a lot of people end up putting it in the root user directory. I forget the exact details of why. Um, they say that's not a good idea. And I think it's a permissions level issue for this, which is why it's in SE. Download the compose file. You will want to create a configuration file. Um, and it's actually really simple. You give it what the domain is and the administration email you're going to use for the instance. Um, I'm not covering it in my talk, but you can actually use that to do some more advanced stuff as well. Once you have it running, you just run docker compose up D, standard docker command. It will download the image, launch it, and it will automatically grab the certificates for the server for you. That is all included. Um, you can throw it behind a reverse proxy at your own peril. Um, it can sometimes fight, and you have to set it up right. I have always chosen to never bother with that. It's too much headache. Um, yes, it will download. All the certificates. And then to create your first invite, you will need to run this Docker command, um, and it will spit out an invite link, which you use to set up your admin account. Um, you can also use that command to create additional users. Just drop the admin flag. Or you can do it from the web dashboard. Um, Snicket circles. This is one thing I like that I've had a little bit of fun with. Um, so I like it. You, you can end up creating separation if you wish to on your instance. Say you've got, uh, so this is overlooking, you're the admin of a server. But you could be like, you know, hey, all my friends and family, I want them on here. You get them on there. You can end up creating, this is your home circle. This is your work circle. This is your fun, fun circle, if you want to separate that. Um, with circles uh, in Snicket, all the users in a circle automatically get added to a group, and everybody gets each other's contacts shared with each other. Um, so the nice thing with that is you get your grandma on Snicket, and she's automatically got your contact, and she can press the button and call you anytime she wants to. It's simple as that. Um, this is, once again, I'd say beginner friendly. Um, but yeah, and then uh, you got all your friends over here, but you don't want your friends knowing your family's contacts because your family don't know your friends. Um, separation. Uh, the, the groups in these are automatically end-to-end -end encrypted, uh, which is also nice. End-to-end um, -end encrypted group chats, when they get large and they're public, insane. 
because uh, there's always e-sharing issues. Whereas with Snicket, everything included by default, the keys just get automatically shared. Usually less issues. And circle groups, the access is restricted to your instance. Um, you cannot go and get somebody from Chatterbox Town into that group. It won't work. You, it has to be on your instance. So it's an even finer grain of control. And from the web dashboard, this is the circle management page. Uh, create as many circles as you want. You can edit them. Uh, with it, you can add and remove users to each circle. Um, all users on your instance, you can, they can be in multiple circles as well. So say you have friends that are also coworkers, have them in both. Invitations. Invitations are easy. You'll want to go to the users page there, and it will give you this. Uh, you can create individual invites. Uh, as soon as somebody uses it, it's done. can't be used again. Um, or you can also do a group invite, and it can be used uh, for as many times as you want within the validity period. So you can have one week however long you want to set it for. Um, I think that I forget what the presets are. Um, management of a Snicket instance. Uh, this gives you overall hardware um, usage. As, as you can see, um, this is on a server with uh, four gigabytes of RAM only. And Snicket is only using 2% of those resources. Um, that's been sitting up for only a week. That's actually for the server that's running right now. And look down a little for, farther. It's using under 25 megabytes of memory. Try matrix. Um, updating. Updating is simple. Pull it down, the first command, uh, or take it down, I should say, and then you use pull command. It will check for, it will pull a new image if there's an update. And then you just run the docker compose up command again, and it will relaunch. And typically in about five seconds, it's running again. All right. I knew I needed to talk through that a little bit faster than I did last time, and I think I bowled through it a little faster than intended. So lots of question periods in a bit. Um, get, getting into a little bit more related things. Why end-to-end -end encryption, or why not? All right, so end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, it's unfortunately a huge buzzword. Uh, proprietary companies love to throw it around for all kinds of things because it knows it gets them customers. Um, most people tend to usually have a fuzzy idea of what it is, but never a clear picture. Uh, the thing with end-to-end -end encryption, to use it properly, you got to need to know why you want to have it. Um, and that is, you need to look at your personal threat model. I'm not going to dive into uh, exactly threat models in this talk. Um, but if you don't know who or what you need to protect yourself from, you're going to make mistakes. Um, and that's one of the biggest things I see. Um, and uh, I'm more lightly into security at this point than full on. And I still see all the mistakes being made. And it's, it's frustrating. People don't understand. And it's because nobody has tried to tell them this is what you may need to do. Sometimes TLS is enough. Um, the hardcore end-to-end -end encryption dudes will hate me saying that, though. But <laughs> T TLS, uh, it, it does encrypt the, your traffic in transit. Um, so that's the, that's the difference. TLS will encrypt it in transit from your server to the server you're communicating with and from your device to your server. Uh, it, the, the ending end, it will encrypt it on your device, send it over the TLS connection to your server, from your server to the, your friend's server, back to their device, which decrypts it. That's the whole point of end-to-end 
transcription so that everything in the middle has no clue what's being said. What is a threat model? Threat modeling works to identify, communicate, and understand the threats and mitigations within the context of protecting something of value. A threat model is structured and representative of all the information that affects the security of an application, or in this case, we're, uh, that's the definition from OWASP. Uh, most of the resources you find out there geared towards threat modeling is like the corporate threat model servers, physical objects. Personal threat models are going to look a little bit different, but the general ideas and concepts are, are similar. Um, so uh, when, when you are looking into threat model, you need to decide what, what needs protecting. Um, so in, in this case, we are talking our communications. We need to protect our messages and, well, and phone calls, because XMPP can end-to-end -end decrypt your phone calls as well. Um, so for this purpose, we have done that. We have just that's what needs protecting. Next question is, who do I need to protect them from? That varies greatly. Some, some people, they don't even really need to know what they're protecting it from. It's just somebody told them they need end-to-end -end encryption, so they go and hit the button. Um, when you are threat modeling, though, you do need to know who are you protecting it from. Are you an investigative journalist? Um, and you literally have government going after you because you're exposing their secrets. Um, are you an average day-to-day -day citizen and it's just you don't want uh, big tech harvesting your data? Um, st still a valid threat model. Um, or uh, you do actually have somebody after you. Maybe, maybe I mean, you've got an abusive ex, whoever it may be. Um, who you protect from will shape how you protect that asset. Um, in this case, all of those, the same steps will be taken uh, initially. Um, for, further on, here, the other way you do things, that will change. All right, and so then, so now that you've identified who you are protecting from, now you need to look how investigative journalist, well, a, a state government, they've got many, many tools at their disposal. They can hit you anywhere. Um, those, unfortunately, is uh, amongst the hardest to get around if you are targeted to that degree. <coughs> if you're just an average citizen and it's big tech, simple steps just take you off the board because they're not going after you personally, and to them, you are not worth it to go after personally. They just, they like the aggregated data. That's what they sell. It's still identifying, but that's what they sell. And then, how do you go about protecting it? Well, OMEMO is my favorite way. Uh, it's, if anybody here doesn't know, uh, OMAMO is actually based on the LibSignal protocol, which is the same protocol that WhatsApp and uh, Signal use. Um, it is just XMPP has implemented it as OMAMO. All right, so how to properly use OMAMO? I was going to type up. All right. <coughs> Do not use blind trust. This is the default in most clients. Um, it can give you a little extra security um, by just blindly enabling blind trust. Uh, but the problem with that is um, if the friend you're talking to, their account gets compromised and a new device logs in, the keys to that are automatically approved with blind trust. So now, somebody snooping in, they get all future messages for free. Um, that is the danger of blind trust. Um, so if it, if it matters to you, please disable it. If it doesn't, and all you're just kind of like, oh, I just want the end-to-end -end decryption above TLS, then blind trust is fine. Um, it's at your own peril. 
turn blind, after turning blind trust off, you need to manually verify your contacts keys. I have also seen people, they turn blind trust off, and then they go into their settings and they're like, new contact, oh, trust. You ju you've just done blind trust. You've got to go to your friend in person or even another secure channel if you're far apart, it can work. Verify the keys. Um, XMPP clients will give you the fingerprint uh, for sure. Some, and it's just the text string. Uh, verify that it matches what you received. Some also give you a QR code, and you can both scan each other's QR codes, and then it will verify the keys for those devices. So, oops, yeah. uh, that, that, simple as that, that. So that's how to properly use it. So you know who you are talking to at all times. Nobody has gone in and is listening in, and you are actually truly and and secure. So personas, this is another thing I also see a lot of people making mistakes on. Um, and it leads into, so threat modeling as well. Um, you will find with me, uh, threat models are a huge core of how you do things. Um, but what, depending on your threat model, will depend on why you want to use a persona um, or alias, whatever you want to call it. There's many different levels to aliases and how you set them up, how you use them. All depends. Um, for me, largely, I use it just simply for the privacy aspect. Um, but I do have some aliases out there that are completely disconnected. Um, nobody has a clue who that person over there is. Um, I largely use those for investigations of reversing this process to map people to their aliases, um, which is kind of what my business is based on. Um, so, uh, other than just simply, uh, it could be that you just you want to separate your professional and personal lives. So, uh, you know, root here, uh, you know, works for MDOA, but uh, root may also have persona number one over here, uh, and that's the one he uses to talk to his real life friends, people that he knows in person. Uh, Root also has Persona 2 over here, and, you know, that is the one that is used to engage with random people online. Um, you know, so you tr create the divisions um, and keep them separate. Uh, it works great. Um, if anybody here has a skill, I would love to see you try to figure out my real name. It's not honestly not super hard put that challenge up there. I love doing that because then it tells me that that's actually where I have a weakness. I am still human after all, or at least so I'm told. So also, your job is high risk. Some jobs, you need that separation because people, there's weird people out there, they will go after you because they want to stalk you because they love you, um, or they want to stalk you because they hate you. Um, and so you may need to use personas to separate your personal and professional lives in that manner. Um, that is where we really get into um, security. A little bit beyond what I'm going to do. Um, so con some considerations oh, when choosing a provider. I think I skipped a paragraph in there. But anyways. Um, you can run your own Snicket, uh, which is which is great. Uh, you can run it on a VPS. You can run it on your own hardware. Threat model matters what you choose. If you run it on your own hardware, uh, XMPP connection has to be direct to your server. Your public IP will be known by other servers that connect. Um, so if that is an issue for you, you're going to want to go with a uh, VPS provider, likely. Um, the issue also there is that uh, now you trust the VPS provider to not snoop on your data, which once again, OMEMO comes in handy because it encrypts. Um, v 
VPNs. I think I see what I missed. Um, when, when, when you are setting up personas, uh, you, you, you need to decide based on your threat model how you need to go about that. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with just a basic level. There's, you can go deeper using all sorts of methods. At the basic level, using a VPN, mask your IP, hide in the traffic of everybody else. Um, set up your persona. Never connect to that persona without that VPN. That is also a mistake I see many people make. Um, they, can, they, set, they set it up right. But then later they forget and they connect to their persona from their same home IP that their real identity is tied to. And well, guess what? I've now just found you. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised at how many people do that. And I actually will not say that I have not in the past. Um, I'll get better over time, but you know. People make mistakes. So as soon as you tie them together and based on your threat model, you've now just been found. Now somebody can go knock on your door, whoever that may be that is after you. Um, whether it's just a jilted lover or <laughs> some, something more serious. Um, when, when it comes to online privacy and security, the really annoying part is that you've got to always be on your toes. You make a slip up and all the work you have done is completely undone. You've got to start from ground zero again and do it all again. Um, that's the, I've probably done that a few times myself. Burned plenty of aliases. Um, so with that as well, when choosing a VPN, be careful of your provider. Not all VPNs are the same. And in fact, most will tie your home IP um, at, doesn't even take a government subpoena. Sometimes somebody's just kind of like, um, hey, they did that, give me their IP, and I'll be like, oh, here you go. Um, so you need one that will not uh, keep logs and is proven to not keep logs. Why I say that is I actually now forget the name of the VPN. They claim to not keep logs, but they actually did. A government subpoenaed them and they gave the logs. Um, so don't take them at their word. Check, make sure that they truly have no logs to give. Um, my favorite is Malvad for many reasons. Many people also enjoy Proton. Um, I like them. I have found they sometimes have DNS and VPN leaks. I have actually had it leak my real IP. Um, so uh, whether that was my mistake or theirs, I don't, I haven't been able to figure that out. Yes. Um, so uh, one of it is, uh, I'd, I'd actually need to go and find the links. I know Proton has had, uh, because they aren't completely open source, um, they have had companies actually do audits on their stuff. Um, and so if, the, if it's a renowned auditor, uh, you can take them at their word that they're doing what they say they're doing. Um, uh, yes? Uh, well, if, if it's an, yeah, the, yeah, the auditor is known for being, yeah. Yeah, um, I actually forget uh, all the big names. Um, if they're little known, um, take, take what they say with a grain of salt. Um, if they aren't, because that's the thing too, is if they're, some could be well known, but they're also known for lying, well, you know not to take them at their word. <laughs> So yes, um, I believe Malvad did have an audit done uh, a few years ago. Um, they don't they don't have them done as often as Proton, um, which which is too why I still have some trust for Proton, despite like I mean, uh, it could have been a simple kill switch issue for me um, that caused the leak and my internet went down for a second and came back up and then it leaked my IP. Um, so. That setting on, so 
<laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it still could have happened. Um, networks are fun. I hate diagnosing those problems. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, another key consideration um, to control or not to control. Uh, simply, how much control do you want of your data? Um, plays into your threat model, uh, what you need, what you want, uh, what you are capable of. Um, it might be that you really need the most control that you can, but you don't have the expertise to do it all. Uh, so you're going to have to do some research, find out where can you trade off on some of that control. Um, so yeah, ultimately, the choice is yours. This is, this is why I love uh, XMPP and open source. You literally get to choose how you want to use this. You are not relying on somebody else and trusting that their pinky swear is the truth. Um, that's one of the other things that I hate. Uh, so many pinky swears and then two years down the road they renege on what they said they were doing and instead they were doing what? Yes. Okay, no, I don't think I've heard that yet. Uh, okay, yeah, and so, uh, and that's a, the funny thing with that is uh, WhatsApp actually uses XMPP, or at least they did at one point. They might not still, but used XMPP as their backend. Um, and, and the LibSignal protocol for encryption, but that just goes to show that uh, WhatsApp is not what it appears to be on its face. Um, uh, and that one of the things too, like they have a feature for uh, reporting a message. Well, you report a message and all of a sudden it's in clear text for the people. That sounds like a backdoor. <laughs> you know, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, so once again, like it's just, when, when you control the servers like this, you can say like, I have no backdoors. And everything is open source, and so if you've got the skill yourself, you can look at all the code and say, I have no backdoors. Um, Yes, uh, for, from, from a privacy security standpoint, uh, that's why I love open source. Yes. Yes, so that is one of the options. Um, and, and one of the beauties of, uh, I should have thrown this in there too, with uh, Snicket's hosting is uh, they are on servers in the cloud. Uh, but the developer of Snicket um, that does that, he's, he actually puts disk encryption on uh, before he loads any of the servers on that. So his provider actually cannot access the data on those servers. That's one of the, but you're still once again you're putting place placing trust in him Are with there that. Other types of I I forget I I had a list at one point I think Unohost has something um, and the, yeah con conversations yeah yeah um, I I think largely with that is you can give them a custom domain. Um, what, what I've seen with that, like Slack does some good work in that area and there's a reason why those tools are popular and they work great for teams communicating with each other. Um, I think it's a little over bloated, but also I've never been in a complicated corporate scenario either. Um, the, with XMPP, uh, to get something similar, somebody would actually have to build it. It isn't that it isn't capable of it, somebody needs to build it. And with that, you also need somebody willing to pay for it to be built. 
Um, whereas Slack, they started a company, they built it, and they marketed it to companies, and companies are like, this is already done, let's take it. Um, so really, to try and drive that, um, if you are in a scenario like that, try speaking to your bosses. Say, can we look into this? Can we get something like this built? I actually think there's uh, somebody working on a Slack alternative that's built on XMPP. I'm not sure where that is. I think it's like a garage project. So um, where, where it's at right now, I'm not sure. It was six -ish months ago, it was, I think, still alpha level. So. Pretty well. Um, uh, like you, you can upload any file type, uh, images, videos. Uh, that's one of the advanced settings you can do when I showed that uh, simple one is you can actually increase the max file size. You can snick it by default limits to 100 megabytes. So if you've got like a three gigabyte video file you want to share with your family, you will actually need to change that setting. And so like if you're actually, if you're using yeah, snick it, Right, right. You, yes, you can do peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, thank you. I forgot about that. You can do peer-to-peer -peer as well, and then it will c attempt to connect to them, and as long as their client is online, it will transfer the file direct to their device. Is this configurable to, like, upload files to, like, it uploads to your server? Yes, it, yes, it will be on your server. Um, it, so from there, you could do database level. Uh, if you really wanted to for backups, but Snicket, everything needs to be on that server. Um, so, but that's once again, like if, if you are that uh, sufficiently technically inclined, you might want to go with Prosody. <laughs> it, it's much more configurable. Um, I, uh, Snicket is actually based upon the core of Prosody, so that's why I talk about it. I use both, I love both. Um, I, yes. I would actually need to ask the Snicket dev unless uh, Sing Coleman knows the answer to that for Snicket. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with uh, Prosody, you can configure it to use uh, SQL or many other things, uh, Postgres. Uh, oh, okay. On their phone, do they need like a two gram client or, or something, or is it is that what we're talking about? Are they using the right terms? Yeah, and any XMPP client will work with any it. XMPP client, yeah. such as two gram, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, if you've got this server and you're not able to run it twenty four seven, will the device that uh, like that they're sending from will they queue it and wait for it to come back up? They'll get an error. Yeah, they, they'll get an error. They'll um, bounce. Yeah, and until your server comes back online. Okay. So. Okay. And then is this, uh, if you can't keep it up 24-7, then this is presumably, uh, uh, like, is this simple install and low-spec device cap uh, uh, eligible to be uh, enrolled in the, or to join the Jabber? Is yes, that it's complete. Yeah, you federate. Yeah. Oh, it will by default. It will by default. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so yeah, that's the you, you can still communicate outside of that. Um, all all the circle specific stuff that that is within uh -huh. your instance. But you you can still create public groups on your server as well that uh, other people. Yeah. Um, yes, I I didn't mention that. So if you're on the Question as well? Yeah, but I think it was modified. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs>
Lo loving these questions. They're, they're actually stretching some of my knowledge. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, just short of, uh, short of posting a whole docket container to um, use a proxy, which might, be, uh, might present other challenges, is there any way to um, force a Snicket instance to use a Sox Five proxy for server to server? Uh, sorry, a which proxy? A Sox Five proxy. I, I think I think that you're getting into a, a level yeah, of expertise person. that you might want to hop over to Prosody because um, that's a you you, you can. Um, there's even a group chat for they call it Franken Snicket for a reason, um, and and pe people have had fun do, doing all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so yes, I, I believe it it is possible. Uh, I have never tried or thought of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you'll only be able to touch the um, servers in the server uh, or node running. Right, yeah. So, so federation can be hard to is possible, but you won't be able to hold on to the server and get it to the next server. Well, yeah. So yeah. Like, but uh, it's well supported. He said it faster than I could have. <laughs> All right. If that is everything, um, they, they wanted us to end a little early so the next person can get going. So, no more questions? Yeah, yes, they, they have an uh, Android and iOS client. Yeah, the, this, the Android one's based on conversations. Uh, iOS is based on Siskin, yes. I almost said the wrong one. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much.